and sanctify us. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be so acceptable in thy sight, O God, my rock and my salvation. Let us pray, Lord, help me to remember thy initial enthusiasm. O God, as the challenges of a calling unfold before me, keep me faithful, optimistic, eager, and to remember this is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Blessed good morning, St. Mark's family. How are you? I can hear my Savior calling where he leads me. I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. The lesson today gives us an example of leadership and the opportunity to follow. In the ninth chapter of Luke's Gospel, when it says, Another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say a farewell to those at home. And Jesus said to him, No one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. I don't know where you come down, but I find Jesus was a little harsh. But it's important to understand the setting of this gospel, where it tells us Jesus is set on his face towards Jerusalem. He's traveling to Jerusalem, and he's fully aware of what is going to meet him at Jerusalem. We all know it will be his death and his crucifixion. So he knew it was not going to be a pretty sight when he gets to Jerusalem. And he would try to get there the fastest way possible. And sometimes when we know what the outcome is, we, we say to ourselves, just let's get it over. But in this instance, he had to pass through Samaria. And the Samaritans, who were not recognized by the Jews or the Gentiles, had no desire to let this Jewish Jesus come through. So he was not welcome. But he still understood his journey was to Jerusalem, but they did not care. And what does the gospel tell us? That James and John even shared Jesus' anger and he said, they asked, Lord, should we let fire from heaven consume the Samaritans? But even in his anger, he showed a compassion and a real James and John. He had just made his state toward Jerusalem, but now he has encountered these followers who have decided they want to follow Jesus and be part of the ministry. The first says, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus says, Foxes and have holes, but the birds and the birds of the air have nests. But the Son of Man has no will to lie his head. The second who was told to follow him first says, Lord, let me go and bury my father. And Jesus said, Let the dead bury the dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Yes, those are hearts. But sometimes in our lives, it needs to come to us in a tough way for us to understand. And the third one that I will focus my message today on. I will follow you, Lord, but first let me say farewell to those at home. Jesus said to him, No one puts a hand to the plow and looks back as fit for the kingdom of God. He could not even say, and Jesus didn't even want him to say, Bye to his family. And during the last couple of years, the COVID pandemic has had a major effect on many of us. Many of us have lost loved ones, and we're not able to say bye or even have the chance to just sit in the hospital and hold their hands as they travel on to the next life. As we are called to follow Jesus, we, have, we must be clear on what our expectations are. Tomorrow we're going to lay to rest in the celebration of life of one of our members, Judy. And I remembered when our sister-in-law called me, she said to me, Judy was with us on Monday at dinner, and we had a good time. She was laughing. And the next 
this morning to our natural father. And there's where the loss comes to self. And then what challenged Mary and her brother was they felt like there was something that they needed to say to her, and they didn't get the chance to. And this happens to us so often when we are, we are promising our, we say we're going to call someone, but something gets in our way and stops us from calling. Tuesday, I lost my best friend and cousin. And I'm still challenged because two weeks ago, I sent him a message and his response to me was, G of you always call me. I'm in the hospital. I'll get back to you. And I can't remember how I responded to the message. And I will not, and I have not so far, looked at my WhatsApp to see if I responded to the message. Because we do sometimes have a fear of the unknown. Yes, he's gone. But I'm saying to myself, could I have said a word of comfort, which I normally would have said to him? I think so often in the over 50 years of our friendship and our family, always had a comfort to say to me. Every Sunday, because I've become a priest, he would call and say, Gee, I'm just checking in on you. You got your sermon right? My brothers and sisters, I, I'm sharing a personal story, but I know each and every one of us may have a story we can tell. And although we see that Jesus was tough on those who wanted to follow him, but was not willing, or uh, they did not at that time know what that expectation of following meant. Following that Jesus was a difficult task for some of them. But then we put it into contrast of the Old Testament lesson. As David read this morning about the blessing of Elisha from Elijah. But we must also remember that story in First Kings in the 19th chapter. It says, So he set out from there and he found Elisha, son of Saphat, who was plowing. There were 12 yoke of oxen ahead of him. And he was the twelve, meaning he was the twelve son. Elijah passed by him and threw his mantle over him. And he left the oxen, ran after Elijah and said, Let me kiss my father and mother, and then I will follow you. Let me kiss my mother and father, and then I will follow you. And then Elijah said to him, Go back again. For what I have done to you, he returned and followed him. He went back and had a feast with his family before he followed Elijah. Elijah became a servant. And we saw the outcome of that relationship this morning, that when Elijah went up to heaven in a whirlwind, he said to Elijah, what can I do for you? And he asked for a double portion his faith. When the mantle was brought to Elisha, he said, God, here I am now. And the water was parted and he was able to cross. That's the example of what will all result will be when we follow Jesus. The example in Kings and the Elisha Elijah story tells us of what we can expect as followers of Jesus Christ. Our face is set towards Jerusalem. But the journey does not mean it is going to be easy. The journey was not easy for Jesus. It was not easy for the disciples because we know after his death, many of them had horrible deaths. Even Paul, Paul in his message to the people of Galatia, he says, Be strong in the spirit. Because it's the Holy Spirit that gives us a life. My brothers and sisters, Christianity has got a challenge. When we have decided to be Christians, we have decided to follow Jesus Christ, there is no turning back. 
there will be pain. There will be people who will persecute you. There will be people who will speak all of you because you have made the choice to follow Jesus Christ. But your face must be set on Jerusalem with the crosses. You have to confess your whole life and be good, good. For example, be good, be as best as you can. Dietrich Bonhoeffer said, and I quote from him, Our Christianity has ceased to be serious about discipleship. We have watered down the gospel into emotional uplift, which makes no costly demands, and which fails to distinguish between natural and Christian existence. To bear the cross proves to be the only way of triumphing over our sin. To bear the cross is the only way to triumph in our suffering. In other words, we cannot treat Christianity like a visit to Burger King. Have it your way. My brothers and sisters, we can't treat it like Burger King. Have it your way. Jesus is expecting more of us to sacrifice. He's asking us to be all in, and that requires sacrifice. Sacrifice is like giving up more time to build ministries of growth, even here at your church. Like I said this morning to the A32, we are doing great with our two. We have three keys, and we are doing excellent with two. But we're struggling with the third one. Our treasure is good. But we are becoming so busy that our time, time, treasure, treasure, and talent, our time is lacking. Are we going to find ourselves available to make time here at this church to build the ministry of Christ? Are we going to join a ministry? Yes, it will be sacrificed. You know, uh, as children, as you, if you remember yourself as a young kid, when you're crawling and you look upon the dresser, there's this shiny object, and you keep looking up, but you can't reach it because you're too small. And then all one day, all of a sudden, you're standing. And the first thing you do with your little feet is to run over to that dresser and knock that shiny object out. You're not doing it because you're doing bad. You're doing it because you're curious. And to, to walk in this journey requires some form of curiosity. And we've come to the curiosity of pain because when we knock that shiny object, it might have been a family heirloom and it broke into pieces. And what does your mom say or dad? My days will give you a spank. I don't know what they do. They put you on a corner now. But what I'm saying to us today is we see the reward that lacks the back from following Christ. The reward the disciples to Jesus and to the state of Christianity. We now have to become leaders that are first to set towards the design of our church. Challenging one. And more and more our world is asking for us step out and be leaders. It is a sacrifice. The sacrifice brings endurance. Endurance will eventually bring satisfaction. It's that wonderful song. I keep hearing in my head as I'm driving my sermon. I hear my Savior calling me where he leads me to the Father. I can hear my Savior calling me where he leads me, I will follow. He continues, I go with him, I go with him all the way. I can hear my Savior calling me, where he leads me, I will follow. I will go with him, I will go with him all the way. My brother and my sister, my Savior is calling me. 
you leave this, you will always have a home. Because our place is also set for the Lord to return. Amen. Please stand. As we as Christians, we affirm our faith and together say in our Nicene Creed, we believe in one God.